good morning. Today I'm going to do another color study and this time it's going to be on the Enviro Friendly Oxide Colors by Daniel Smith and I'm quite excited to try these colors out. I have never um, used them. I did a quick little test of the red iron oxide and was like, ooh. <laughs> So I really wanted to share it with you all. So this will be the yellow iron oxide, Enviro Friendly. I also tried to find some information on YouTube and such, and there wasn't a whole lot on there as far as these colors went. So hopefully this will bring um, some value to you. Uh, I really enjoy swatching colors. <laughs> it's a pastime. <laughs> uh, it's a hobby in itself. And um, I really enjoy learning about the pigments, their properties. And uh, yeah, so anyways, I'm going to share what I found out. So something really cool that you all might not know about is that every Thursday, I'm Pacific Standard Time, so every Thursday at 2 o'clock, Daniel Smith does a color study live demo with John Cockley. And then on Friday they have a guest artist that comes and does a demo and that's at 10 30 in the morning and it's so valuable it's every week it's live you can join via zoom or via Facebook anyways uh, it's invaluable so oftentimes on Thursday I'll swatch out the colors that are going to be used by the artist on Friday so you get to learn a little bit about what colors these brand ambassadors use and then watch them use them the next day. So anyways, an invaluable resource that's free, um, giving back to the art community. So really cool thing that Daniel Smith does. So last week on um, April 28th, during the live with John Cogley, I got a chance to ask the question to hear a little bit more about these enviro friendly colors. And this is um, an excerpt from that conversation. I'll go ahead and link the whole video at the end of this, just so you can find their channel and find um, access to these, in, these wonderful color studies that they do every single week. But in, in short, here's what John Cogley had to say about the Enviro Friendly and what makes them environmental friendly. So he stated that oxides can be made in the lab or they can come from the earth synthetic or natural. Enviro friendlies are from the environment. We buy them from a company that goes to super fun sites. Super fun sites are areas that industry in the past will stuff that has leached into rivers, into lakes, or something of that nature. And this company will go in and they will take all the material out, they will purify it, and then they will sell the pigment. We, meaning Daniel Smith, buy it, meaning pigment, from them and they use that money to fund the next cleanup. So it's a way to give back, a way to use the pigment and then give back so they can do the next river or the next site. So that is why they are called environmentally friendly. I did a little bit of a deeper dive on it and I did, I don't know which company Daniel Smith uses. If anybody knows the name of that company, that would be awesome. But I did find another, or a company online that does the same similar thing and it shows that this is an acid mine drainage it's acidic and though initially clear it contains high amounts of dissolved iron the orange acid is neutralizes and iron mixes with oxygen and becomes visible separated iron oxide precipitates <laughs> and settles leaving clean water on the top look at that and then clean, neutralized, cleaned water is returned to the stream. And pigment, the iron oxide is dried and ground into artist grade pigment. Like I said, I don't know if this was is the same company that Daniel Smith uses, but I love that there was this visual of the process or of a process that's used to produce uh, these pigments. So there's a couple other paint manufacturers that are doing this, um, but <laughs> I am such a fan of iron oxide colors and if there is a way to help fund Super Sight by supporting these colors, then I'm all for it. But first, <laughs> we do need to mix them up, don't we? So I'm gonna grab uh, three ramekins. Let's see here, 
Let's see if you can see all that. Yeah, you can. Okay. I'm going to use a half inch angle shader. I'm going to add some water to each ramekin for mixing. I'm going to start with my value line. So I'm going to go from full strength and then slowly bring it down until it's at its lightest value. And this way I can see its mass tone versus its wash color. This is the red. Strength swatch. And I'm going to do a couple little mixes just to see how it gets along with other colors. So first let's do okay. So I'm gonna just mix up my puddles. I don't know how many I'm gonna need to do. Basically what I want to see is what kind of color separations happen from this. Uh, so these are granulating colors. The way I use them in watercolor, I usually don't use them as mass tone colors, meaning that I almost always use them as a mixer. I use them as a mixer to add granulation, texture, sediment, excitement <laughs> to my mixes. So I'm gonna give that a go. So first I'm gonna do some hands of yellow light. And I'm going to add a lot of water though because I want to see, you know, that color separation. And the color that it makes. So the hands of yellow light already, I see that it made a nice, um, like a sienna color. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? And look at all the granules. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Let's try Cronacridone Sienna, my favorite color. Again, we'll add enough water, so hopefully if there's any separation to be had, we'll get to see that. It, it definitely uh, neutralized the Cronacridone Sienna. Still a little bit of red. Quinacridone Red is an interesting color. It's always on my palette, but it's probably um, one of the more rarely used colors. I'm not a big red per I don't just don't use a whole lot of red, but recently I discovered that when you're doing yellow flowers, <laughs> drop some red into your shadow area and boom. Um, I also learned another color secret. But really quick while we're here, <laughs> I'm gonna show you something cool. So I'll take the Quinacridone Sienna this paper is busted, so hopefully it'll show. And then I'll take the Perignon Orange and I'll add that to it. And it makes this great, like, fire orange. It doesn't show up too good on this paper because this is old paper, but wow, that's a good color combo. Okay, back to this. Definitely want to try a little bit of turquoise. And water. Wow, look at that awesome green that it made. That's a really cool green. 
I mean, that could be in place of Paraline Green. That could knock Paraline Green right off my palette and I could just do the Yellow Iron Oxide and the Turquoise and boom, have, have a mix. It's mixing into the red. I'm just gonna pull that up and then put some more green down. Yeah, that's, that's a good green. All right, let's uh, see what it does with the, with the blue. Stop it. Right off the bat, um, Pro I had down as a deep ochre. Con, I can't tell you a con. These, this color mixes in a beautiful way. I love this. This is in my color world. And look at it on its own. It has this deep dark ochre. It's not as yellow as I would have thought. It's to me, it's more brown, but it is a yellow brown. So anyways, it goes from this deep dark, but then look at this beautiful sandy color. Oh, love it. Okay. So light fast one, staining one. Yes, it is granulating. It's semi-transparent and it's made with PBR sits. I would say the pro is that it is a deep ochre. And <clears throat> I want to say you could actually take <laughs> sienna, uh, you know, sienna colors off your palette because look at that perfect sienna it makes. You can control how granulate. Anyways, okay, well, love that one. Dangerous. Okay, <laughs> let's try, let's make up some puddles. Uh-oh. I have these ramekins because I want to do a painting with of these today too. So um yeah. So anyways, a painting with these because I'm learning that <clears throat> believe it or not, all this swatching that I'm doing, uh it still changes my opinion still changes somewhat in the act of painting. Because when you're doing a whole painting, that's when you really get to see the colors. I recommend swatching and I'm um, doing a painting to really get a hint of what, how the color is gonna act on a day-to-day -day palette. So first let's do that yellow and see what becomes of it. Oh. So like this reminds me of raw Sienna light and that reminds me of Sienna, doesn't it? A natural Sienna, really, really cool. Let's do, the quinacridone sienna. See how it does. Just a little bit richer. You might want to see with this one. I'll, I'll stay with the red. That's fine. Okay. Isn't that pretty? There's seems to be a little bit more granulation in this than that. Good to know. Let's see how turquoise plays with it. What is this? Ooh, that's an interesting color. You could put a little more turquoise if you wanted to get it to more to the green. Ooh. Wow, it's like a perfect indanthrum blue or um, faience blue color, which is a color I've been trying to figure out how to mix. And look at that gray. Okay, <laughs> we're in trouble. I, I like both of these. I like these so much. The granulation's amazing. Um, and it's mass tone and down into its wash, it's, kind of like a burnt sienna it, it's a little bit different than the traditional transparent red iron oxide which is one of my favorite colors but the mixing is where it's at okay, it does go from a deep brick to an earthy rose the con i'm not sure how it's going to perform in mass tone all by itself i think it will i'll always use it as a mixer but then again, I haven't done a painting with it yet so the fact that it supports these super fun site cleanups i would I, I could replace my transparent red iron oxide with this enviro friendly version for sure. I mean, look at this cup, these natural nature inspired colors that are happening. And now let's go to the enviro friendly brown iron oxide. 
make up my petals. I gotta tell you, I really love the support I'm getting on these color studies. I appreciate um, those of you that are leaving comments and stuff and sharing about these colors because they are quite entertaining for me. And so to find people that also enjoy them is, is really exciting. Wow, 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 what is that? Look at what happened on my value scale. It's like the dark brown is sediment and it's sinking to the bottom, kind of like how sepia does or lunar black. And then it's leaving kind of an orange brown. Oh, there is a natural color separation that's happening just with the pigment all by itself. So cool. Okay, we're gonna get some yellow going with this. So that's kind of like a, a mustard, <laughs> a mustard yellow. Let's try a little sienna. To me, that's a burnt sienna right there. I mean, a, a heavy, heavy granulating burnt sienna. Just add the quinacridone sienna to your brown iron oxide and boom. So that's another color solution. So we have oh Paraline Green, Indanthron Blue, Burnt Sienna. I know the colors don't come over perfectly, you know, through the video, but I gotta tell you these are so pretty. I need to put a little more brown in that, I think. Okay. Let's see what it does to the Quinacridone Red. I did not expect that. I did not expect it to be like this deep rose. You know, you could do some dusty roses. The sediment is doing like a trippy thing, but this paper is aged, so hmm. it'll be interesting to see how it acts in a painting. Beautiful. Beautiful, instantly neutralizes the turquoise. And let's see how it does with a little bit of phthalo blue. Oops, over here. Okay. Again, a beautiful, beautiful color. All right, so pro is heavy granulating, and if I were going to rewrite my pro, I would say that this is the French ultramarine of browns because of the heavy, heavy granulating that it has and the potential for color separations. Like it wants to color separate all by itself. Um, anyways, I can keep going on this. It, I'm so happy I asked um, what makes these colors environmentally friendly because I, I didn't know. I just didn't know if it was you know, resourced politely <laughs> and gently in nature or, you know, and sometimes they use those names on packaging and things that, and it's just kind of, um, you know, something to catch the eye. But learning, wow, I mean, I had no idea these came from, from the cleanup of Superfoods. Like it blew my mind, it got me so excited and explore them further. Nice to know which of these three are your favorite? Which do you think would be, or something you could add to your palette? The Enviro-Friendly Yellow, Red, or Brown? What Daniel Smith says about it. This is a feature that's on their website under the resources tabs called Color Stories. You could print it out or have it as a PDF on your computer. And it's basically what they have to say about their colors. So. We'll start with the yellow. It says, our Enviro-Friendly Yellow Iron Oxide is a deep, rich ochre. Daniel Smith Enviro-Friendly Watercolors. The colors aren't green, but the process is. To make these paints, we use pigments from the Earth's crust, obtained through a process known as iron oxide recovery. This method removes color iron oxides that pollute mine water, cleaning the water so it can re-enter a receiving stream and resulting in a cleaner, natural environment. The recovered iron oxide is thoroughly washed, then used to create a trio of rich colors ranging in tone from a warm golden yellow to a deep red earth 
to a beautifully saturated brown with a bluish undertone. Huh, I don't know about the bluish undertone. Yeah, I guess it does. Yeah, huh, interesting. The red, it says, this versatile red brown is deep brick at full strength and lighter washes a warm and transparent earthy rose is revealed. Um, a perfect brown pink for portraiture. It is the natural looking red on cheeks and lips. And then the brown iron oxide, it says at full strength, the deep umber of our enviro-friendly brown iron oxide is useful for warm shadows and dark values. Mixed with water, a brilliant granulating wash displays warm cinnamon tones with a darker pattern of granulation. It says enviro-friendly pigments are reclaimed and refined, giving you an earth-friendly option without sacrificing color quality. Another resource on the Daniel Smith website, you guys might see me pulling these from time to time. So while we're here, I'll share, is uh, here is another one where you can look up if there's any hazardous ingredients in the colors. Um, and if it has the Prop 65. So Prop 65 is colors that contain a chemical known in the state of California to cause cancer or reproductive harm will have a yes under the Prop 65 headline. So if it has this AP on here, that means that it's ACMI approved, so meaning that it's not toxic. There's no toxic. So see how Aurelian has cobalt, so it does have a Prop Position 65 warning. So anyways, let's look up and see if it has any of the enviro friendly here we go so the ef yellow no enviro enviro friendly red no and enviro friendly brown no so even though these come from a super fun site there's no cancer causing um, ingredients in them so no prop 65 warning super cool and then you can also print out another one that they have that lists all of their granulating watercolors so it shares the name in English, the common pigment name. Um, it also will share your light, fast, and staining transparency and the chromatic order, which I'm still learning about, but I believe the chromatic order means how high in value it is, meaning how light or how dark. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then we also have a list of all of their um, pigment characteristics, and this is all the colors their common pigment name, what series they are, meaning this tells you kind of how expensive they are, how expensive they are to make. Light fastness rating, uh, if it's low staining or high or non, and if it's granulating, non-granulating. If I could ask them for one thing, I would love them to add a category of low granulating because I think that's important in color mixing. Like Rossi and a light, they have it as no granulating, but it's actually low to no granulating. <laughs> the Chronocridone Sienna too, I feel like the Chronocridone Sienna would be a good candidate for low granulating because it mixes, it mixes really great, but still because a little bit of granulation, it'll still give a little bit of color separation. So anyways, that's, those are my thoughts and reactions to these beautiful new colors. I'm excited to add these to my palette and play with them. And uh, I hope you got some value out of this video. Leave me your comments. Uh, if you know of any other colors that are enviro friendly, free to put those down in the comments too. So I wanted to continue to play with um, these iron oxides, um, especially the brown iron oxide, because as you know, a lot of times umbers and siennas make for really good gray mixing. And I'm on the fence between Payne's Blue Gray and Indendro on my palette. Now Indendro has about a 50% dry shift, um, meaning that it, when you put it on wet, it dries up to 50%. But as you can see, you can get a really dark value. So that's really the only negative to the Indendro that I can think of. Um, other than um, some people might say it's a little flat, but it's actually a super beloved um, pigment and on so many artists um, palettes so I decided I would mix it with this environmentally friendly brown iron oxide and see what I got and I was kind of excited because I got this cool um, dark medium uh, you know three different kinds of grays which was kind of exciting um, I did a mix 
of all three with the Indian throne, the um, in, environment, enviro friendly. I got to get start being able to say that fluently because I'm going to be using these paints. They're amazing. So the Indian throne mixed with the red really nicely. It created like this neutral tint color with the brown iron oxide. It created this granulating sediment. Um, like Payne's blue gray and then with the yellow it made it this beautiful warm um, you know warm gray so I thought well could I get those similar colors I'm um, using uh, using the Indian throne and the brown iron oxide and you know the yellow and um, I think that's close to the red and that's close to the blue so you know you could achieve with one of these colors so technically you know I wouldn't need all three of these on my palette but I love them each and the slight differences they bring and the slight different granulations that they bring so I think I'm gonna try them out on my thing so anyways since my decision was on do I want Indian Throne or Payne's Blue Gray I went ahead <laughs> and mixed the Enviro Friendly Brown with the Paints Blue Gray. You know, here it is in its mass tone. And look at the amazing granulation. That's crazy. Anyways, and look at the variation of this. Now I don't get the blue, 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 right? As I would with the Indian Throne, but I could put a little touch of blue red shade because Indian Throne is super staining and so are the Thalo Blue. So I could put a touch of the Thalo Blue red shade to get the bluers. So I think, I mean, another thing that you can do with Paints of Blue Gray is you can mix to almost the black. So um, yeah, <laughs> for my color world, I think I'm going to keep my planes, my beloved Paints Blue Gray on my palette and definitely going to put this Enviro Friendly Brown on there as well. And just look at how beautiful the variation of gray from warms to cools that you can get from just those two colors. Anyways, had to share. <laughs> okay guys, happy swatching. <laughs>